Oh, hey. So I've been sitting here, I think this is take nine or 10, trying to make this video. Today, we're gonna to talk about capacitors. I think people spend way too much time nerding out about stuff that doesn't really matter. Today, we're gonna to talk about capacitors because this is one of those things paper and oil versus basically anything else. It's almost a religion at this point. Before we get started on this conversation, what I want you to do is go in the comments and make the comment. How you feel about it, doesn't matter, I'm not judging, how you feel about it, kind of get your feelings out, like let everything flow, any kind of anger, any kind of frustration about capacitors, how you feel about it, how you disagree with somebody else, how you're about to disagree with me, all that kind of stuff. Just go in the comments and just kind of work it all out. Like just tell me about your mother if you want, How, however you want to do it, just work it all out. I'll wait. Okay, we're gonna talk about paper and oil. We're gonna talk about polypropylene, like the spray egg orange drops. We're gonna talk about silver mica. We're gonna talk about all these other ceramic, all these other capacitors. Let's talk about, first of all, why we choose a capacitor for a particular project. So, from an electronic engineer's standpoint, when he designs a circuit, he's looking at a few things. He's looking at uh, the capacitive reactants that he needs. Basically, a capacitor is a storage device, right? So electricity goes into it, it stores there for a moment, and then it comes back out. With a DC circuit, it stores in there as much, as long as there is a charge to keep it charged. In an AC circuit, it actually goes in and out with the cycling of the frequency of the, of the circuit. It's just a storage device. The capacitive reactant of it is the value. So 15 microfarads, 22 microfarads, 33 microfarads, 0 .047 microfarads, 0, .0, I mean, for guitar values, right? That is determined by Basically, it's two plates of metal of a particular size and they're a particular distance apart with a dielectric material inside. Basically, electricity can travel across anything, right? Even air. Uh, air has a dielectric. Water has a dielectric. Everything. Electricity can pass through anything. It's how a spark plug works, right? So you have two electrodes and if the voltage is high enough or in certain circumstances, if the current is high enough, Electricity can jump across even air. So everything has a dielectric. So in a capacitor, you have two plates and you have a gap and then you have that gap and it's a certain distance apart and the plates are a certain size and that, ele that electronics engineer needs to say, okay, I want it to be charged for a certain amount of time. I want uh, it to be able to hold a certain amount of voltage without electricity going across that gap. So it needs to hold a certain amount of voltage. That's gonna create a certain amount of heat so I need it to work within that heat range. I also need it to have a certain amount of tolerance because the frequency of the current that's going in and out of there, I need it to operate within a very narrow range of that frequency. So I need to know the tolerance of it. I need to also know not just the heat failure point, but also how is it gonna perform at its extremes when it's really cold and when it's really hot, is it gonna give me that precision that I need? Now I need to decide what material of the capacitor and what type of capacitor I need to fill all these criteria for this design that I have. And then they pick a particular sort of capacitor for that. We have, let's say we have electrolytics, we have ceramics, we have polypropylene, sort of like, a, um, like an orange drop. We have paper and oil, we have mylar and oil, we have silver mica, we have, there's many, many different kinds of capacitors. The reason those are there is not because they sound different, but it's because they perform different in different environments. All of those criteria that we just mentioned in a circuit design have to be taken into consideration and then the material itself stands up to those particular things. So that electronics engineer would pick the style of capacitor needed to fulfill a particular need. So let's bring that whole concept to a guitar. First of all, let's talk about why particular capacitors were used in guitars at particular times. We think of the vintage guitar having a paper and oil capacitor in it. Why? Because just like anything else in the guitar industry at the very beginning, they were basically just using stuff they had. So cloth wire, four bond for the bobbins and the pickups, butyrate for the bobbins and the pickups, 
Uh, all those things were not made, uh, even the wood choices, were not made because, ooh, I'm gonna, it's gonna make some sort of tone and in 50 years everybody's gonna want this. It was literally because it's what they had on the shelf. It's what they had available. Paper and oil caps, for instance, were the norm because in the 40s and 50s, basically all audio processing circuits were tube-based. So you had 400 volt plate voltages. You had two to three amps of current, or maybe more or less, depending on what you were doing. But that created a lot of heat. So they had to have some sort of capacitor that would process that much heat. So when you take a piece of paper, and you roll it up with electrodes in it, and you put oil in there, it stays cooler. That's why paper and oil was invented. You fast forward, 40, 50 years, and there's other stuff that does exactly the same thing and keeps up with heat and doesn't blow up and doesn't burn, and more importantly, stays within tolerance at the extended areas of its heat range. That's why paper and oil was used back then. It's not because it sounds a certain way, it's because it's what they had. The capacitance is exactly the same. 0.022 is 0.022 in a paper and oil, a ceramic, an orange drop, it doesn't matter. The capacitance does not change. And you could say, well, yeah, but the dielectric material means that it charges up slower and faster. No, that's the value. That's the, the number on the side, that's the value. And you could say, well, yeah, but an old paper and oil behaves differently because, no, here's why. The difference in capacitor design is for different environments. Heat, voltage, current, and frequency tolerance uh, out of, of a very narrow tolerance are all things that we do not have in a guitar. The easiest way to illustrate this would be if you put an orange drop or a paper and oil cap in a guitar, it would read what it reads and it would do what it does. If you held a lighter to that and you heated it up to 400 degrees or 700 degrees or whatever the limit of it was, depending on what it says on the side, the performance would change. That is the difference. When a capacitor is at its limit of performance, its performance can change. Its ability to stay within its performance parameters at its extreme of environment is the difference between capacitor. It's not the capacitance. It is a thing. It is a passive thing. Now here's the interesting part about a guitar circuit. You have a coil, you have a resistor, which is the pot, and you have a capacitor all working in unison. You have the capacitance of the guitar cable. You have all those things working together, kind of talking to each other, working in reacting to each other as a circuit. Don't look at the capacitor as doing its own thing. Look at it as the rest of the whole, and you will quickly find out that a paper and oil versus a orange drop don't make any difference because all this other stuff is what is making the difference. It's as simple as that. There's no reason to spend $17 for a capacitor. None whatsoever. In fact, there is even more reason to not use vintage parts in your guitar. Because here's why people get so freaked out about this. They go and play a 1950s Les Paul or a 1960s Les Paul with paper and oil caps in it. And they go, oh man, those Sprague vitamin Qs sound so amazing. That capacitor is blah, 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 blah. So here's what happens in a paper capacitor. As it gets older, it drifts from its original value. The resistance rises and it sounds different, better in some people's eyes. So an old capacitor sounds different than a new one. Simple as that. That doesn't mean that you can go put a capacitor in your guitar today and have it sound like a 1950s capacitor because you can't make old. And it's actually not a desirable thing. It's a failure that just kind of sounds good to some people. But that doesn't make it a better capacitor than another. It just makes that guitar sound a certain way because that particular capacitor has aged in that way. It's not that you can actually duplicate it. It's very interesting. In fact, we sell oil-filled capacitors on our website. Uh, they're not as expensive as some of the crazy ones, but we also use mylar in oil instead of paper in oil because they last better. They don't break down. If you have any questions about this capacitor stuff, if you want to fight about it in the comments, please be nice. We will delete obscenity and all that sort of stuff. I'm just, you know, we're nice around here. So have a conversation in there, in the comments, and let me know uh, what capacitors you use. And, uh, yeah, this is an interesting one. 
I've put it off for a long time. This is like take 10. I've been trying to figure out a way to like put this into words <laughs> because uh, you know that people argue about it all the time. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell a little next to it, and make sure that you watch the next video on Dylan Talks Tone. Thanks for hanging out.